Hi, I'm Representative Jennifer Longden. I represent Legislative District 24, which is Central Phoenix and South Scottsdale. May I explain my vote? Yes, ma'am. Um, I never thought I'd see myself sitting here in this position as Representative Jennifer Longden's. The first couple of times I thought about it, good friends said, no one will ever vote for you. You use a wheelchair. And I heard some of that out during my campaign, but I proved to all of my legislative district, the quarter million people that live in my district, that they can be represented by an individual who uses a wheelchair, that I'm no different than anyone else in the community. We talked about functional needs. We talked about what access means. We talk about the issues that impact every person that lives in my district and in our state. What is the public's role in an election year? Arizona is a pivotal state at the national level, but more important is what's happening in our most local politics. We're most impacted by what is decided by our school boards, by our city councils, and certainly by our state legislator. So register, become aware of the issues that are important to you, raise your voice where you can, and most importantly, vote. Remember Justin Dart said, vote as though your life depends on it, because it does. What does a legislator do? So there are 60 legislators in the House and 30 senators. So the 90 of us represent all of Arizona and 30 legislative districts. The House has completed its labors and is ready to adjourn sine die. The first thing we do is we meet with constituents to hear about their issues and their concerns and their passions. We uh, spend time exploring how to promote those, uh, if it's a passion or an area of interest, uh, highlighting businesses in our communities or special attractions or organizations worthy of highlighting. And when it comes to dealing with people's issues, we spend time working to try and understand, is this an educational issue? Is it a policy issue that we need to work with a state agency or the governor's office to clarify uh, or educate, or do we need to write a law? And that's what we do here as legislators. How does an idea become a law? So the process for passing a bill starts with, again, an idea, and that can come from anywhere, a best practice in another state, a constituent, a news story, an advocacy organization who comes to us and, and uh, expresses an issue that they'd like us to work on. <laughs> We then work here within the body with our staff to create appropriate constitutional language. And we work with our legislative council to make sure that it fits into the state constitution and our existing body of laws. So you write your law and you uh, take it to the chief clerk's office where it uh, begins its process. It's filed, it gets a bill number. Then the leader of the chamber, in this case, the speaker of the house, assigns it to a committee. Hello everyone, the House Ad Hoc Committee on Abuse and Neglect of Vulnerable Adults is called to order. Secretary will please call the roll, Haley. That committee chair then decides to hear your bill and you go into that committee where uh, your fellow legislators are, the ones assigned to that committee, and you sell them on your bill. You explain to them why you brought this bill, who it's important to, what you see the consequences of that bill being. And then you can have a debate. Uh, not everyone may agree with your great idea for a bill, and you may have to defend it or explain it. The committee then votes. Our next step will be voting on, on this. We'll take a motion and then vote uh, in a single motion to either adopt or reject these recommendations. After that, it comes out here to the floor and the Speaker of the House or the Speaker Pro Tem introduce your bill in what we call Committee of the Whole. So you've, what the process you just went through in committee, now you do it with every one of your fellow legislators. All 60 of us are on the floor and you can be asked tough questions to um, defend your bill and explain why it's necessary and why it's a good idea. And whether or not they agree. We are a separate body. We need to make the policy in this area. And the Committee of the Whole does a voice vote. Yes, we should really go ahead or no, this is really bad, kill it here. Then it goes to third read and this is exciting. On third read, we hear the bill one more time and then they open the board behind us. 
all of our names are listed there. And everyone pushes their button, uh, green for yes, red for no. And you need 31 votes to move it out of this chamber. House now proceed to vote. Then it goes over to the Senate and the exact same thing happens. And then it goes to the governor. And if the governor signs it, it becomes a law. Now, let's take a tour of the House of Representatives with Representative Longden. So this is the House Gallery, and this is where the public sits and watches us do our work. You want to ensure that we're making good laws and you should be part of that process. So the public is welcome here. There are two boxes that are fully wheelchair accessible. The gallery is on the third floor of the building. And then we have all of the other seats available. From here, you can look down and watch the legislators as we do our work. Now, there are a couple of rules to being in the gallery. First off, you have to be quiet and maintain decorum because this is a place where Arizona's business is being done. You can't bring any hand signs and um, you can't bring food or beverage either. We're on the second floor of the Arizona House of Representatives. Chambers are right behind the double doors we're gonna go through in a second. If you're looking to catch a legislator to get a last minute commitment on their vote, this is the place to hang out. This is the members lounge. Actually, a lot of the work that we do happens in here, not on the floor. And only members are allowed in here with guests that are escorted by one of us. So this is the inner sanctum, come on. When we're in session, we're here for long hours, and sometimes we come out here into the members' lounge. This is a great place to catch another legislator and have a conversation with them about the bills that are important to you. If you're looking to get someone's vote and they still have an issue, this is one of the places we have those conversations. We educate each other, we fight it out in here so that when we go out on the floor, we're ready to vote. After I was elected, they added the door opener so that even I can get out here all by myself. We refer to this as floor or the chamber. This is where all of our voting happens. This is where our debates and committee of the whole happens. Every legislator has a desk out here and I surround myself with the reminders um, that are important to me of the people and issues that uh, that I wanna make sure keep me grounded out here on the floor. I think one of the pieces that's most important to me is this little knickknack that reminds me every time we go into debate, the words you speak become the house you live in. And this reminds me to be a leader and a diplomat every time. So we have our microphone so that everyone can hear what we have to say. And this is our box. So there are four buttons that are important. If I need a page, I push my page button. If I want the speaker to know that I have something to say, I push my request to speak. And then when it's time to vote, it's either yes or no. We're in hearing room one. The state house has five hearing rooms. And this is one of the rooms where committees meet. Uh, monitoring of group homes specifically, would this be encompassed in that? I'm just wanting to see how. This is the place where the public can be heard. There are chairs out here in the audience. I'm currently in the spot that the chair holds during any meeting, and the chair has absolute authority in any committee meeting uh, to decide who's going to be heard next and for how long they'll be heard, when to cut off discussion, and when it's time to vote. Mr. Vice Chair, please move the bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that House Bill 2189 as amended receive a due pass recommendation. Not everyone can make it down to the Capitol for specific hearings. So all hearings are broadcast live and you can find those at azleg.gov. You can watch live and you can look at archived hearings to learn more about what happened during any hearing. We're in the hallway outside of the hearing rooms, and here's where you will find the request to speak terminals. You can come here and type your comments. This is where you register yourself so that you can then use the request to speak system from your own home or uh, library computer. So 
on days when we're in session, this hall is filled with people going in and out of these hearing rooms, waiting for their chance to be heard and watching to see how their legislators are voting. This is my legislative office. When I'm not on the floor and I'm not in committee, it's most likely that you're going to find me here working on the issues that are important to my constituents. This is where I have those meetings. I think that I want to leave you with one thought. This is your house. We work for you. So make sure that you have your voice heard. Make sure you register in the RTS system, the request to speak system, so that your legislators know your thoughts on the issues that we're considering. Write, email, call, come down and visit us, and most important, register and vote.